and shine, boy. It's time to start doing that shuttle shuffle. Good morning, my loyal viewers. Now that we're in orbit, I'm going to explain a few things. I'm continuing my discovery series of tutorials. That's right, this is part of that discovery series. Alright, now that we've made it to orbit, this is the For All Mankind Space Shuttle Enterprise, which uses the same flag as a another vehicle that I designed but never decided to show on my channel. It was really, really horrible. Basically, in the For All Mankind universe, their space shuttles fly with their external fuel tanks still attached, which means they probably need better thrusters in the RCS modules and more fuel in the tanks, which they probably do. Something the real NASA probably would have never approved to happen especially after SDS-51L, commonly referred to as the Challenger disaster. Basically, you stop at the station, fill her up, or in my case, this one was a little too heavy on the fuel, because I tend to over-engineer everything, and I dump some off. Next, you set up a maneuver node that aims directly for the MUN. Now, if you follow the mouse, you'll see that the, when we separate the external tank, it'll crash right into the center of the MUN, creating seismic stuff. All right, if you're enjoying this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps my channel. I just got up to a thousand views. Thank you very much. All right, now, three, two, one, translunar injection, go! There we go. All right, what you're seeing here is I'm only using one engine, because it makes sense that they would only want to modify as few engines as possible. And plus, that one lines up the best with the center of mass. Big shocker there. And there we have fuel tank separation and PBDs opening, or payload bay doors. Alright, as we coast gracefully toward the mun, we then plan a maneuver node to adjust us. Basically, we're going to be firing in normal, because I like to pass over the North Pole first, rather than aiming for the South Pole, which, in all reality, they probably are aiming for the South Pole and for all mankind, based off of their trajectory in the Season 1 finale. But as we coast, we get closer and closer to the moon, and eventually you will see it peek up from the bottom of the screen. And here we go. Now, if you want this vehicle, I will be putting on a Kerbal X. I'll probably be doing that the day after this video goes out. You break yourself into lunar orbit. And yes, this is a tutorial on how to get into low lunar polar orbit. And cinematic shots, courtesy of me. Making space look ever so graceful and not at all dangerous. Alrighty, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the cow controller, angle, eject gateway module. That's right, we're launching pieces of the gateway. I decided, rather than using a shuttle derived vehicle, I figured launch it with the actual shuttle. Sounds fair enough to me. Alright, what we're also gonna do is we're gonna pick up the crew I left at the South Pole base, Jamestown. We're gonna do that by having them climb into my custom version of the LSAM, which actually, you only have to fuel this thing up to like 50% and it can get all the way to low lunar orbit and back. I really over-engineered this thing, which is great. Lift off towards Space Shuttle Enterprise. Alright have the ducking sequence. If you want to see a ducking tutorial, I have one on my channel. It'll be in the top right corner of the screen. Could be right about there.
All right, now that we've swapped over the crew, expert tip, if you have the, both modules full, put one of the Kerbals on EVA holding on to the crew hatch. And then you have an open slot to, with which to uh, bounce your Kerbals back and forth between the two modules. It's a uh, very fun problem. Now that we've uh, picked up supplies and a new crew with which to run Jamestown base, we have landed back on the Mun, and now it's time to go home. Now, I did make a minor mistake here. If you notice around the docking adapter, or multiple docking adapter, the one on Kerbal X will have two extra fuel tanks. That's because I learned that, uh, well, it didn't have enough Delta V using the monoprop engines. But no matter, I still got it home in one piece after doing a quick top off in a low, low lunar orbit. Uh, if they should. Begin the re-entry sequence. Now, if you're gonna be doing this type of mission, I would really recommend aiming for an altitude above 40 kilometers and doing multiple passes, because as you can see, the nose cone blew up, as did the control module later. All right, so I didn't land on target, but that's cool. Everyone got home safely. Now, this thing, fair warning, is really great to fly when you're landing. It's an excellent flying machine, as a John Young said on STS-1, but during launch, it kicks like a mule. I mean, first you're going one way, then you're rolling another, then you're pitching forward, backwards, upside down. I mean, it's like flying a bucking bronco. But if you can manage to squeak into orbit, you'll get this beautiful mission you see before you. Three, two, one, liftoff. Liftoff of Space Shuttle Voyager on a mission to add the second module to Gateway. Voyager has cleared the tower. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below. I want some good ideas in the comments below, so that way I know what you guys want to see next, because I'm really grasping at straws here. I am the astronaut. Let's fly.